Hey everyone, today we're going to be building a firewall. Oh wait, wrong video. Today we're going to be building a firewall. In front of me I have all of the parts that you need to get yourself started. But don't worry, if you're choosing to do a virtual firewall, I've got you covered. We'll cover all of the installation steps throughout this video. So first of all, what you're going to need, a CPU. It doesn't have to be anything fancier than a cheap dual core. This is six years old. Some RAM, anything, eight gigs, four gigs, that'll be fine. Sophos XG is limited to four cores and six gigs of RAM. You're gonna want an extra NIC. This is a fancy quad port for a server, but you can choose what you need. Remember, you need at least two. And this, if you're a high roller, this is a 10 gig card. So 10 times faster than each of those ports. And a cheap SSD. Don't worry, you don't need anything flash. 64 gigs, that'll be absolutely fine. You're also gonna need a USB stick with an ISO that you can download online, and I'll show you how to install all of that. You're also gonna require your ISP router, but we're gonna turn that into modem only mode. Now don't worry, if you can't do that, you can run this just as a normal router into your firewall. That's called double netting. We'll talk a bit about that in a subsequent video. You'll also want to have a cheap switch, something like I mentioned in the previous video, one of those cheap five port or eight port net gears, a TP link, you choose whatever fits your budget. But importantly, you want to make sure it's got VLAN support because we'll be coming onto that in later videos. Let's get to it. So eventually what you're going to end up with is your ISP router, hopefully in modem only mode, but it doesn't have to be. You're going to want to connect that into the back of your firewall. One of those ports is going to be designated as the WAN, wide area network, that internet connection. And then you're going to want another ethernet cable that comes out the back of the firewall and goes into your switch. That switch is where you'll connect all of your other devices to share that internet connection. Okay, enough of that guy. Let's get serious and down to business. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is to go to the Sophos website and create an account. Once you've created this account, you need to get the license key for Sophos XG Home Edition. Once you've got that, you need to go to the download section and you need to download the ISO file that you're going to burn to that USB stick if you're doing the physical install. If you're not doing the physical install, you're doing the virtual one, you need to download the two corresponding hard drive images for Proxmox. With your ISO downloaded, you just simply need to burn that as you would any other ISO file. The key thing here, make sure that it's in that DD mode. If you just leave it in ISO mode, it's not going to work. Back to the virtual installation. Once you've got those hard drive images, Hopefully you've been paying attention to the previous videos where we copied our existing Hyper-V hard drives to our Proxmox node. We're going to use the exact same process for this. So what you need to do is copy those downloaded hard drive images and put them onto your Proxmox node. We're going to do that QM import command again once we've created the virtual machine template. So let's get onto it. When creating your virtual firewall, the first thing you need to do is go to the networking tab in Proxmox. Now, hopefully you will have three NICs. And the reason you want three NICs is because the NIC you are currently using in the last video is what we call the management NIC. Now that's what's providing you access to the dashboard through your web browser. For the firewall, as I mentioned in the intro, we need two dedicated NICs for that. We need the WAN port, which is gonna come from your router or modem, and we need the LAN port, which is gonna go into your switch. So therefore you'll have the management for Proxmox, which we're not gonna use during the configuration of the firewall, but you want to be able to assign the WAN and the LAN port to that. So the way I do that is I go into the networking tab and I look at all the NICs that are installed on my Proxmox host. The two that you want to use you want to click on that and create a Linux bridge. Now what that is doing is tying a virtual network to a physical network adapter, that physical NIC. 
what you need to do is determine which one you want to use for which. It doesn't really matter, just take a note of which one it is. So you want to create one for the WAN and one for the LAN. And that's quite simple, just add a comment into the bottom right hand corner, which one is which, because that will help you in the configuration next. For the LAN, I recommend that you make it VLAN aware, and we'll need that for the next video. Now, some hardware can be a bit funny with VLAN aware, because what it will do is set VLANs 1 to 4096, so 4096 VLANs, and that can cause an issue. That certainly happened for me for the Mellanox cards. So if that does cause you an issue, just simply go back and undo it. I'll show you how to fix that in the next video. It's pretty simple. You just need to manually define which VLANs you want to assign to that network adapter. So once you've assigned and labeled your bridges to your interfaces, you'll see that they then appear on the networking tab. They'll be called something like VMBR and then a number. On the screen you can see VMBR2 and VMBR3 and you can also see all the other virtual bridges that I've created for my Proxnox nodes. Once you're happy, you need to hit that apply configuration. This may briefly interrupt your connection, but it should seamlessly come back online and you should be okay. So the next step is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna create a standard virtual machine as we have done before, but there are a couple of things we want to tweak from last time because this time we're using virtual hard drive images as opposed to having an OS to install. And also we're not gonna be creating disks during the creation because we want to import existing disks. Now, hopefully this process will show you just how simple it is to deploy Sophos XG as a virtual firewall. It's so much quicker than having to download an ISO, burn it to a drive, stick it in a machine, change the boot order, and all of the things that come with it. This is also going to give you a lot of flexibility in the future. For example, if you're installing this using one gig NICs, it's very simple to be able to buy a couple of 10 gig NICs, put them into your Proxnox node, and then simply change the virtual bridge that you're assigning to Sophos. And Sophos won't care because you've got a layer of virtualization in there. You can change the MAC addresses to match what it's expecting to have. So it's really, really powerful. So make sure that you give it a name. One thing to take note of is to make sure that you click start at boot. This tripped me up a few times before because when I'd rebooted my node, um, I hadn't checked start at boot, so I was wondering why my network was broken. So if you ensure that you click start at boot, that means every time you turn your Proxmox node on, the firewall should start up. So that's really handy if you've only got the one Proxmox node, because without turning that on, you'd have to manually log into the terminal and then turn it on. So with this on, every time you turn it on, your network should come back to life. So on the OS tab, simply click do not use any media and hit next. On the system, you can just leave that all as default and move on. On the disks, you're gonna to wanna to remove that disk because as I say, we're assigning our own. CPUs is up to you. It can use four cores in the XG home version. You also wanna make sure that you change that type to be the host. For memory, Sophos can only use 4 gig, so I've just maxed mine out. I've also turned off ballooning device, which is that one where it's dynamic memory that we had in Hyper-V, because that will use all of that memory just from the start. In the network, you want to assign the LAN that you created, and we'll also add the WAN after this. You'll see that you can only select one NIC, so just select the one for the LAN, and after the configuration wizard, we'll go in and manually add another one. So once you've created that VM, you should be able to see it on the left hand side. And then if you go into the hardware tab, we'll need to do a few alterations. So what we're gonna to need to do is add another network interface. We want to add the WAN. So therefore we should have the Sophos XG LAN and the Sophos XG WAN. These are the two that you're going to want to have wires plugged into, and I'll put up a diagram shortly to demonstrate that.
One thing to make note of is the MAC addresses. You can manually change those to whatever you want or you can leave them as the default, but it's worth keeping an eye on those because you'll need to see what it says within Sophos XG. Once you've created the networks, you want to log in to the Proxmox console and run the QM import command as I'm showing on screen now. It's simply QM import, the ID of your virtual machine, the two different hard drives and then the storage that you're going to save that on. So on mine you can see it's QM import 113. I do it for both the auxiliary and the primary hard drives and I assign that to my NVMe drive. That's just the name of the storage you have on yours. Once that's completed you should be able to go to the hardware tab again on your virtual machine and you should see that the two unused disks have shown up exactly like we did in the past video. And just like in the last video, you need to click on those drives. Make sure you do the zero one first, which should be your primary drive. Click edit and then just assign it to that SCSI zero. Click OK and do exactly the same for the next one. And it should automatically put it as the SCSI one. Once you've done that, you're going to want to go to the options on the virtual machine and you're going to want to change the boot order. You want the SCSI 0 to be the first boot order. So go ahead and drag that to the top. Once you've done that, hit OK. And that's it. That really is as simple as it is. You just need to now start that virtual machine and voila, it will automatically install and it will present you with the login page. You need to log in using the default password, which is admin. You need to accept the license agreement. And once you've done that, you should be ready to go by connecting into your firewall. Now Sophos XG defaults to an unusual IP address. It defaults to 172.16.16.16. So in order to access that, you're going to need to plug in your current host, i.e. the computer that you're using to access the Proxmox GUI. You're going to want to plug that into the LAN of your firewall that you just created or into the switch, especially if the switch is isolated, i.e. there's nothing else on there handing out DHCP. Now, if you have your machine that you're using to do your administration set to accept DHCP requests, you should be assigned an IP address on that 172.16.16 subnet. Similarly, if you plug that into your switch, you should have the same outcome. Just make sure that, again, nothing else is on that switch that's handing out DHCP, such as your home router. Once that's been handed out and you've got an IP address, excellent, you're ready to go to the web GUI. If for whatever reason that isn't working, you simply need to go and change your network settings. And I've had this in the past. I've just set it to 172.16.16.17, and that's worked for me. So yes, these are pink shorts, but more importantly than that, I have an ethernet cable. The other end of this ethernet cable is plugged into the LAN port of my virtual Sophos XG. This will be exactly the same for your physical install. Just make sure it's in that LAN port. So this end, this is going to go into the machine that you are using to configure and control your Proxmox environment. With that inserted, let's jump back. This should now be able to be accessible through our host machine. So it looks like we've had some success here. After I plugged that in, I went to HTTPS, now make sure it's HTTPS, even though it's using a self-signed certificate, which is generating this error here in Chrome, it is using SSL encryption for that traffic. So you wanna to go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 172 16 16 16 and the important bit colon port 4444, that's four fours. Let's ignore that warning. And let's proceed. Excellent. We've got the GUI up and running. We'll accept the user agreement. 
and we'll start the setup process. So this should be pretty straightforward. Put in a password that you want to put in. When you're doing this, you may as well leave the tick box for the latest firmware. That will go off, scour the web, bring down the latest version for your install. Now during this setup, I haven't plugged my router into our Sophos XG because I only have one and it's already working on my network. I recommend that you don't plug in the WAN port whilst you're getting used to Sophos XG. I recommend we just install it on the LAN and you can have a play and understand the GUI. When you feel confident, you can switch over your WAN port into the Sophos XG and hopefully all the devices on your network should just work because the default will just be to allow that traffic through to the internet and you should be fine. So in order to continue, you're going to have to click continue offline. Being offline won't allow you to register, but that's not a problem. We can register any time later and we already have the registration key provided to us in the email during the registration process. This should be straightforward. Give your firewall a name, select the region you're in. This would normally auto populate if it was online because it can go and scour Sophos's servers to determine your location by IP address. It's up to you if you want to opt into the customer experience improvement program. I typically don't. Now this is where you can define your LAN. Now for the moment I would recommend you disable DHCP just in case you have any other devices plugged into your switch. You shouldn't do because we want to use a dedicated switch just while we're familiarizing ourselves with Sophos XG and all of its functionality, which we'll cover in another video. If you were to leave that DHCP enabled and you had other devices on there, as well as your ISP router that's probably dishing out DHCP, you would cause a lot of trouble on your network. You'd have two devices trying to dish out different DHCP leases and that would cause havoc and probably break your network. So I recommend unless you are going full in with um, the Sophos XG WAN and LAN configuration, let's just leave that disabled for now. It'll still enable us to log into the dashboard and have a look at all the features and you can have a play with those in your own time. I'm going to leave these disabled for now and we're not going to get to cover it in this video but these are all the things I spoke about in the last video when I was talking about what an adaptive security appliance can do. So these are all the kind of advanced features so I recommend you have a look at these, you go onto the Sophos website and you do some deep diving into each of these topics. This is an important thing, you want to set this up properly put in valid email addresses because every week or whatever time frame you want to do, Sophos will automatically back up its configuration and send that to you, which is a really handy feature, especially when you're combining that with virtual infrastructure. It means that you can just spin up a new Sophos XG if anything goes wrong, and then you can just instantly deploy your backup and you're up and running again. So once you've done that, you'll get a configuration summary. Just have a look through there. If there's any errors that you've introduced, just go back and fix those. But hopefully everything's okay and you can just hit finish. Now this is where the magic's gonna happen. Sophos XG in the background is configuring and doing the final steps for installation. Once that's completed, the page should automatically refresh and you'll be presented with the default login page. So go ahead and use your admin and then put in the password that created during installation. And there we have it. Congratulations, you successfully installed Sophos XG, either virtually or physically. And now you've got everything you need to go and have a play. I suggest you set the storage master key. This is for encrypting your backups. So hopefully you've been able to follow me and we've just hit an epic milestone in our home lab journey. Not only do we now have Proxmox installed on a dedicated server, we have a Docker host set up running on that Proxmox server, and we also have 
XG installed as a virtual machine or physical machine. We pretty much have all the bare bones necessary to make an awesome home lab. In the next video, I'm going to be taking you through the more advanced features of Sophos XG. So in advance, I recommend you go to their website and read up on all of the features you're going to see on there. We're going to be covering topics such as VLANs and how we can configure those because we want to get to a position where we're able to expose some of those containers to the internet. Awesome job.